Hello everyone, this is Zai, and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to motion track using Buju and Cinema 4D. Uh, so we're going to, obviously you need Sony Vegas as well. So we're going to start off in Sony Vegas. Um, first off, put the clip in that you want to motion track on. Uh, cut it down to where you want the track to be. And then you want to go and render it as a JPEG sequence. Obviously I've already done this as you can see. Make sure you put it in its own folder because you get a ton of images. Um, you select the frame rate by going into your project properties and it's there. So once you've rendered that, go to Buju and import sequence. Locate to the folder where you saved your images. Wrong folder. Click on the first one, open, apply, and close. Then edit camera. Change the frame rate to the frame rate you saved your images as. Then track features. Leave the advanced part, you don't need that for this. And start. This could take a while, so you might want to sit back and relax. Okay, so <coughs> now that this is almost finished, you can see we've got a ton of tracking points uh, we won't need them all and it's going to be a bit hard to choose out the ones that we want so go to camera solve and tick optimize camera path smoothness and start that this should go fairly quick compared to the tracking features depending on what computer you run Right, so that got rid of loads. Uh, the good thing about tracking to use in Cinema 4D is you can choose points anywhere. Like, if these would actually work, which they won't, but if they actually worked, we could track there and put text here, and it would stay right there where it's supposed to. So that's a good thing, which means we've got all of these dots that we could use as long as we find some good ones that are aligned. Um, let's see, what can I use? I'll try this one and this one okay so left click the first one and then control left click the second one and that will highlight both go to scene geometry add coordinate from hint change the type to y axis uh, the reason we're doing these ones as a y axis is the video goes from left to right and it's the y axis so again if you do it right to left if the video goes bottom to top or top to bottom change the Y for a Z axis so once we've got the two selected uh, connect the t connect two selected and then add coordinate from hint again change to X axis and these will be the horizontal ones so we'll choose this one and this one so just left click the first one again that will get rid of the previous two that were selected and control click that one connect two selected add coordinate from hint change to origin the origin wants to be somewhere in the middle I'm hoping this one will work so just left click that one connect to selected update coordinate frame close export camera solve change this to cinema 4d and browse to where you want to save this I'll just call mine camera. Change the scale to 100 and save. Next, export sequence. Save this wherever you want to save it. And I'll call this tracked SEQ. OK. Now, mine, when I done this, used to go instant, but for some reason, 
it started to take its time so I'll skip this bit for you alright so now we're finished doing this sorry about that now we've finished this uh, go to cinema 4d file open and open up the project leave the scale at 10 uh, go to the lights area and create a background new material and load the texture into the colour part and it will be the sequence that we saved from Buju and just drag that onto the background and now we can see the actual movement take this back to the start what we'll do now is create text you can't really see the text at the moment but just because of the scale sometimes you can sometimes you can't but there's nothing to worry about uh... we'll just write in whatever text you want there let's put tutorial for the sake of this uh, and extrude nerbs drag the text onto the extrude nerbs to make it 3d and make sure you have the extrude nerbs highlighted and scale it up so it's nice and big we can read what's there and then move it into position what you might want to do first because obviously you want to make it look like it's on the road so the text is going to need to be rotated but you also want a shadow there so we'll put the floor in first before we actually start rotating the text we'll rotate the floor not on the H not on the B sorry <laughs> on the P change it to 90 and this should line up with the text perfect so drag that so it's so the text is just sitting on top of it and then we want to scale this up so it stretches out throughout the text now if we highlight the floor and then shift and click on the extrude nerves then we can rotate them both together so it actually looks like it's on the road just hide the floor layer then you can see there we go that's not looking too bad move this into position that should work that'll do then this material that we use for the background drag that onto the floor and with the material selected change the projection to frontal then right click on the floor layer cinema 4d tags and compositing untick self shadowing and tick compositing background this will make the background see through and so we can create shadows on there put a light in there stick it into position put this one back here since this sun is up this way click on shadowing and soft shadows let's see how that looks okay so the shadow's gone a bit haywire but we'll we'll just we can fix that easily let's bring this back in there we go that's that's looking a lot better than what it was and if we scrub through let's just hide the floor layer so we can see Oh, that's the light. As you can see, the text stays where we wanted it to stay. Now, I'm not going to mess about with the uh, materials. Don't worry too much about this going off. It'll be alright once it's rendered out. Um, I'm not going to mess about with materials just for the sake of the tutorial because I haven't got too much time. Um, so that's pretty much what we have um, you want to render this at 
I want to change my frame rate so it renders a bit quicker. Um, the frame range, all frames. Save, save as whatever format you want to save as. Um, I change, I use mine as a quick time mover. If you do as a quick time mover, make sure it's on animation. And then choose a save path. And then wait for this to render. Alright, so finally, this is finished rendering. Let's uh, go back to Sony Vegas because this file is going to be huge. Um, make sure you refresh so you've got the uh, the final render there. Drag that into your timeline, and there we go. When it wants to move. Okay, so as you can see, that stays exactly where we wanted it to. You could take this into After Effects and, you know, like make the shadows go over the text and smarten it up a bit. But just because I haven't got too long, I won't be doing that. So once that's done, you just want to render this out again. Um, simply because the file that we just rendered will be huge. Um, I can show you. See, mine is 473 meg. Um, so just render this as what you normally render as. And enjoy. I hope this helped. And don't forget to subscribe, comment, favourite, everything. Thanks a lot.